If you love to use Photoshop to defy the laws of nature and create real cool looking special effects, the levitation effect is definitely one that you need to know. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and a couple of little tricks to make it look more believable. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So what I've got for you today is a levitation effect. And I'm gonna let you know right now the secret to creating great levitation effects is starting with good photographs. And what you wanna do is just have people resting on chairs or different objects like that, um, make it look like they're falling or whatever they're doing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take away those props of those things holding them up and then that's what's going to make it look believable. There's a couple of other little tricks in there too that I'm going to show you to just add a little touch of realism. Now the photos I'm using I got from Adobe Stock and you can find a lot of photographs there. In fact, I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can get 10 free images from Adobe Stock. All right, let's get started. This is the photograph that I chose and the reason I chose this is I really like her kind of falling effect going on here and also the expression on her face is really good. It doesn't look so posed, it looks quite real. So I wanna use this particular picture. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna cut her out. So we're actually just gonna go up here and select the quick selection tool. And under the quick selection tool, there's an option that was dropped recently and it's called select subject. So if we click on that, it's magically gonna select the subject. And while we're waiting for that to load up, let me ask you a quick question. Are you guys using Mac or Windows? Are you on a laptop or are you mainly on a desktop? Let me know in the comments underneath. All right, now we've got our selection that's kind of started and we're gonna clean it up a little bit with our quick select brush. Notice there's some areas there that got left out and we just simply click on these. So I see there's a few places there where it was overdone. We don't want to have webbed fingers and that's something that happens a lot in selection. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the left bracket key, make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key and just click there to remove from these areas. So just look for these little tight little spaces there and that's where you're going to find those particular things. Those little webbing kind of things I call them. And once you've gone through and refined these selections and got rid of all the little webbing areas, what we want to do is just check it to make sure that things are properly selected. And the way to do that is just hit the Q key for the quick mask. And we can see that's looking pretty good. Let's change it to a yellow color. Double click on the quick mask. Then you'll see this color swash. Then we can change the color of that to anything we want. In this case, I'm going to choose a nice bright yellow. Click OK. Hit the Q key once again. And I'm just looking for areas in here where we missed it and it's looking pretty good. Don't worry about the seat because we're going to be removing that. All right, so we've got a rough selection. The next thing we want to do is we want to go and clean up that selection and we're going to do that in the select and mask. So what you want to do is just click where it says select and mask in the top and then we click there and we go into our select and mask space. I'm gonna go under the view menu and now I'm gonna change this to on white and on black so we can just kind of see it. On white is a good one to work on because we can see some of the jaggies around the edges. Now I'm just gonna click show edge, turn opacity all the way up. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go under the radius and increase it until we just see an edge around there. That's looking good and turn off the show edge, it's just gonna kind of help a little bit. Now what we wanna do is we wanna actually go down here and I'm gonna turn on another one of my favorite options which is decontaminate colors. This helps us a little bit on the edges. So we can go under the view here and we're gonna to go to overlay. But we can also grab our little refine brush and just kind of run that around the edges after we've done that to just kind of smoothen things out. Okay. It's looking pretty good. At this point, I want to just put this onto a new layer with a layer mask. So we scroll down to the output settings here and make sure that that option is chosen. And now we just simply click OK. And I'll hit Control Zero and we can see there's our rough selection. Now I want to do a little bit more work on this before we incorporate it into the picture. Let's remove the stool. 
I'm just going to use the polygon lasso tool to do this. So I'm just going to click here on there and then just follow it along to the edge there. See that? We've got to the end. Let's just go off the canvas. All right, looking pretty good. And then I'm just going to paint with black. Notice I'm selecting the layer mask. And I'm going to hide this area and I'm going to do that with black. And notice black is the background color. So if I hit the control backspace or command delete on Mac, that'll fill it and then click D. Control D or command D to deselect. Okay, so we're almost there. But one of the things you're going to find in this case, we've got a flat bottom is I want to just kind of liquefy this, but I'm on a mask. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select this and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And the reason I'm doing that is so I don't get messed up with the mask. So we're going to go under the liquefy tool. So we're going to choose filter and then we're going to go down to liquefy. And what we want to do is grab the first tool here that's a forward warp tool. And I want to make this brush huge. So I'm just hitting the right bracket key. And I'm just going to go in there and I'm just going to click. And maybe make it a little smaller. And I'm just trying to create a little bit more of a rounded shape there. So it doesn't look so flat. And then click OK. Awesome. Is I'm just going to flatten this one down. I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize the layer. Typically I wouldn't, but right now there's a bug inside of Photoshop. If I drag that in there, it's not going to apply the liquify properly. So we're just going to take that in and drop it into our picture. Excellent. So we need to make sure that we composite it with our head up like that. Let's make it a little smaller. Control T or Command T for free transform. And I'm just going to kind of move her around a little bit. Well, let's try this size. Let's play around a little bit. Okay, so now we've combined the photographs and we've sort of got our lady floating. But there's a couple more things we need to do to add a touch of realism. So let's go in here. The first thing I want to do is I want to kind of adjust her tones to match. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer. And I want to clip this so it only affects the layer underneath and not all the layers. The way to do that is to just go under this little option there. See that option? Click on that icon. You'll see a little arrow will appear. And now it's only going to affect this layer and not all the layers underneath. Now, if you want to know more about curves, I've got a comprehensive tutorial. I'll link it underneath. Okay, so we just want to kind of match these tones a little bit more. So I'm going to go about here and just kind of brighten it. What I'm trying to do is match the brightness of the environment a little bit more. Okay, that's a little bit closer to what we've got going on in our environment. Okay, so I might get someone saying right now, hey, the lighting is not matching, it's not perfect. Calm down, it's a tutorial. It's not trying to be perfect art. Now, just remember though, when you do this and you shoot it yourself, a lot of the time what you want to do is shoot your model with your chair inside the same room that you're going to be compositing it. And in that way, all your lighting and everything is going to match perfectly. So what I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of a reflection on the floor underneath. So it looks like she's in this room. All right. So I'm just going to drag this into the new layer icon. And I'm just going to create a duplication of our model here. So I want to make this one look like a reflection. So hit control T for free transform. Then we're going to right click and we're going to choose to flip vertical. And then just hit enter to apply. Holding down the shift key to constrain, we're just going to drag this down to about here. And all I want to do is create just a little bit of a reflection in the floor. And notice that this floor is not highly shiny, so you can see these reflections are very, very soft. If it was a very polished floor, uh, marble, something like that, it would be more reflective and you'll blur it less. In this case, I'm going to blur it quite a bit because just look at these other areas, how they're reflecting. See that? So we're going to choose Filter Blur, and we're going to go down to our Gaussian Blur. Let's turn up that blur quite high. There we go. We're mostly just looking to get the tones in there. Click OK. Now what we're going to do is change the blending mode to something like a soft light. 
or we could even try a hard light. And you can kind of see how that affects it there. So if we look at that before and after, you can see it's sort of affecting it. Let's bring our opacity down a little bit. So I'm just adding a little bit there. And you know, it's actually almost looking more like a shadow, but it does have the color in there. And, uh, and that's gonna work well. Now there's one other thing I'd like to drop in here to make this interesting. Is why don't we add another uh, topic? So I've got this cup here that I extracted previously. I'm just gonna drag it in. And let's just hit the shift key and drag it down. And we could kind of put this up here where you know her coffee is also spilling. Okay, so I kind of like that in there. And that just kind of finishes off the effect a little bit and makes it fun. And now of course the best way for you to learn this is to do it for yourself. And I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna give you a link underneath in the comments where you can download the same images that I'm using from Adobe Stock. You'll get the watermarked versions and you can play around with those and experiment. And also don't forget you can grab 10 free images from Adobe Stock and build some of your own composites or use them for whatever you like. And by the way, if you're a photographer and you'd like to contribute to Adobe Stock, it's very easy to become a contributor. I'm gonna give you a link that tells you how to do that where you can get your photos in front of millions of people and make some extra revenue. So I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, smash that like button into dust. And if you like these kind of tutorials every single week, every Tuesday, and sometimes on Saturdays as well, I do new tutorials and I'd love for you to get them. In order to do that, you just need to hit that subscribe button right now, become a subscriber, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload a new video. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about this. Drop it in a comment and also let me know what you'd like to learn. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.